What's up my stats stars, Michael Prenchuk here. The goal of this video is to make sure you are gonna be ready for your very first free response question on your very first unit one exam. Now, best guess is that on that unit one exam that you're gonna be taking in class, you're probably gonna have a free response question dealing with some type of quantitative data. Maybe it's gonna be a histogram, a box plot, or a stem and leaf plot, or a dot plot, and you're gonna be asked questions about the mean, and the median, and finding outliers, and finding the median. All those kinds of things are gonna be awesome, and I promise they're probably gonna be on your test, or at least they should be. So what I've created is a free response question that models what you might be seeing on your unit one test. And you have free access to it. All you have to do is check out the ultimate review packet for EP statistics, link in the description below. In there, you will have access to this document that has these free response questions on it for you that I'm gonna talk about in this video. So the goal of this is for you to see questions and know how to answer them. That way when you see them on the test, you'll know exactly what to do and ace it. All right, let's take a look at the questions right now. So the first question you see here deals with the histograms. So the heights of a random sample of 215 oak trees from the northern part of Ohio was collected in feet. Below is the distribution of those heights. So we see a nice histogram here. The bin size goes by 10, starts at 20, goes all the way to it may have one value there at 100, and we see the number of trees are listed there on the left-hand side for the height of each bar. So for example, we see that there's roughly maybe four trees in that 20 to 30 bin. All right, so the first question that we see is describe the distribution of heights for the sample of trees in context. I promise you, if you're not being asked this question on your unit one test, then your teacher's not doing a great job. You should definitely be asked to describe a distribution. You wanna make sure that you mention a couple important things. The center, the spread, the shape, and then the outliers. You wanna do all of that in context. So here's my model answer for this particular question. The distribution of tree heights has a shape that is unimodal and roughly symmetric and mound shape. So if we look at this, we see that nice big kind of um, peak in the middle, it makes it unimodal. And we also see that it's very roughly symmetric, goes down a little bit on the left and a little bit on the right. The most important thing is I don't just write, it is roughly symmetric. I wanna make sure I start off with a little bit of context. The distribution of tree heights, because after this problem deals with, has a shape that is unimodal, roughly symmetric. Next up, the center of the distribution is approximately around 45. Looks like that center bin is 40 to 50, so any value in there would be good to mention for the center. But I also gave that 45 in feet, don't forget about units. The data spreads from about 20 feet to 100 feet, but we do see that the majority of the data is in those middle three bins from 30 to 60 feet. And I also do see a potential outlier way out there in that range of 90 to 100. That one value out there is potentially going to be an outlier because it does seem to be extremely big. All right, the next part of this problem goes ahead and gives us the five number summary. So it gives us a little bit more information, the min, the first quartile, the median, the third quartile, and the max. And the question says to describe a method to identify outliers and then use that to determine any potential outliers. So a lot of people use the idea that up or down two standard deviations from the mean could definitely help you find outliers, but we don't know the mean, nor do we know the standard deviation for this data, but we do know the quartiles. So what I'm going to recommend in here is using your fences. So the upper fence is Q three plus 1.5 times the IQR, IQR, I could spell, and the lower fence is Q1 minus 1.5 times the IQR. And the idea is any values outside of these fences are going to be deemed outliers. But notice how it says not just to do it, it says to describe a method to identify it. So we actually have to use some words to describe what it is we did. Like I just said it out loud, but we've got to make sure we write that down and then actually go ahead and do the procedure to find any outliers. So here's my work for that problem. So I first brought up the, the fence method. I'm going to use the fence method to, um, you know, apply to find if there's any outliers. I will use the two formulas to find the upper and lower fence. And if any data values fall outside of those two fences, then they're going to be marked as an outlier. So the lower fence is Q1, 40, minus 1.5 times the IQR. The IQR is the distance between Q1 and Q3, which is 10. And I got 25 feet. Now the minimum, because I know it from the five number summary, is 29 feet. Therefore, there could be no values below that, right? I mean, well, fences, the lower fence is 25, and obviously 29 is not below 25, so there's not going to be any lower outliers, since the, I'm saying a lot here that you don't need to hear because I know you know it. But again, if the bottom fence is 25 and 29 is my min, there ain't going to be any values below it. All right, then I went and found the upper fence, 50 plus 1.5 times the IQR of 10, and I got 65. Now, here's the deal. We know for sure the maximum is 98 is going to be an outline. The maximum is clearly more than 65. But there are a couple other values that potentially could be outliers. So, for example, in the bin 60 to 70, in that bin right there, 
we do see that there are some values, but the idea is that we don't know what those values are. 65 is right about here. All of the values in this bin could be between 60 and 65, so that would still fill up the bin, but those would not be outliers. So there might be some outliers in here, but we're not 100% sure. But this value in here looks like there's about two of them. These two values from 70 to 80, those are definitely going to be outliers for sure, because there's no doubt about it, that those two values are going to be above 65. So what I kind of fin finalize in saying here is that I know there's probably three outliers for sure. There could be more, but without knowing the exact values in that 60 to 70 bin, I don't know for sure. So again, I explained the process. I showed my work. I was very detailed in giving that answer in context. Those are the things your teachers are going to be looking for if you want to get full credit. All right, the next question says explain how the mean would compare to the median. Would it be greater than, less than, or about the same as the median? Now, here's where we got to be careful. If it wasn't for this outlier out here, I'd probably say that the mean and median are going to be roughly the same because the data is symmetric. But when you have an outlier, even one of them, and actually we know that there might be a couple more in this 70 to 80 bin. So when there's a couple outliers on the right-hand side, they're going to pull the mean higher. Therefore, the mean is going to be slightly greater than the median. So we want to make sure we explain that. And here's my explanation. The mean height of the sample would be greater than the median due to the outliers on the upper side, which would cause the mean to be pulled a little bit higher than the median height. So being very clear to answer that question in context, notice I'm using the word height and I'm using units and I'm explaining the idea of what's happening. All right, next up is another histogram, but this time we're looking at 250 oak trees measured from Southern Ohio. And below is the distribution of those heights and we're asked a couple questions. The first is to describe the distribution of the sample of trees in context. So. You say, well, we already did one of these. Yeah, but you know what? You really need to practice it. So once again, we want to mention shape, center, spread, and any potential outliers. So I said that I thought that the shape was definitely skewed to the left. We see the majority of trees that are kind of on that taller range. Fewer trees are below 70 feet. The center of the distribution, I said was around 80. If we go back here, around 80 looks to be what the center of that distribution would be. And again, you're just kind of eyeballing it if we don't have any statistics. And the heights spread from 40 to 100, but the far majority of the heights are over 70 feet. And then I mentioned there does not appear to be any outliers. If there's any, maybe less than five, there could be some outliers, meaning like maybe these ones down here, I mean, potentially could be outliers, but again, I don't know for sure. So maybe these five or four or six that are down this bottom bin could be outliers. But again, not 100% sure, but worth mentioning it's possible. All right, the next question says to describe a method to estimate what interval the median tree height falls into and input that, implement that method to determine the interval of the median. So it's super important that you understand that I don't have the data, so I can't actually put the data in order and count to find the middle. But what I can do is use this formula, sample size plus one divided by two. This formula will identify the location of the median. That way we can count in the bins to find out where that particular location falls. Now, listen, we will not be able to tell you exactly what height of a tree marks the median. We will only be able to determine what bin it falls in. So I'm going to go ahead and actually talk about this method. So I said the median value is the center. And to find the position of the median, we're going to take the sample size, add one, divide by two. And again, I'm describing, right? It said to describe the method. A lot of kids just jump right into doing it so they don't get full credit. So this is going to inform me the where to look to find the median. This can tell me the position of the median. So for us, 250 plus 1 divided by 2 is 125.5. So the median is going to be right in between the 125th and the 126th value. So where is that value? Well, I went ahead and I started counting, right? So I said there's about six values in this first bin, seven values here. I estimated 20 values in this bin, and then this bin 78 looks like 88. Now, if you stop there and add up 6, 7, 20, and 88, at this point, we're at 121 values. So that means that the 125th and the 126th value, again, where the median falls, is going to have to be in that next bin. The median cannot be in this, in this bin right here because, well, there's only 121 values so far. So if I keep going, the 122nd, 123rd, 124th, 125th, 126th values are going to have to be in this bin. That means that the median is somewhere between 80 and 90 feet. Is it closer to 80, closer to 90, or is it right in the middle? I have no idea. I just know that it's somewhere in that bin because that's where the 125 and the 126th data value fall, and the median is going to be right in between there. 
All right, the next question says to describe how the mean and the median were compared for the trees in southern Ohio. Well, once again, we're going to comment on the fact that it's skewed left. When you're skewed left, the mean is going to go to the left. It's going to be lower than the median because those small trees that are between 40 and 50, they're definitely going to affect the mean. They're smaller. They're going to pull the mean down a little bit. Probably not going to be drastically lower than what that median is, but it's definitely going to be a little bit lower. So I said due to the distribution being skewed to the left, the mean of the sample is less than the median because the few lower heights will pull the mean down below the median. All right, and the second question of this free response packet I made deals with box plots. So there are two main suppliers for sunflowers in a certain region, Sally sunflowers and Sandy sunflowers, a lot of S's there. Kevin's interested in examining the heights of sunflowers sold by each supplier, so he selects a sample of sunflowers from each supplier and records the height in inches for every sunflower. The parallel box plot below represents the distribution of those heights. Now, it's really important to remember that we don't know how many are in each sample. There could be 100 from Sandy and only 10 from Sally. I, I literally have no idea. But when you make a box plot, what you're doing is breaking the data into 25% chunks. So 25% is between the min and Q1, 25% below or in between Q1 and the median, 25% from the median to Q3, and 25%. So the same number of sunflowers, whatever that is, if there was 100 sunflowers, it would be 25 are in each of those sections. And same thing for sandy sunflowers, but we don't know if there's more or less, we just know the percentage, right? Hopefully that makes sense. So we do see a lot of differences, and you better believe the very first question, and this comes up on the AP exam all the time, so I make sure it's on all of my students' very first test, is to compare the distributions. Now, make sure when you compare, you compare the shape, you compare the center, you compare the spreads, and you compare if there's any outliers. But it's also super important to do all of that, of course, in context. So make sure you're talking about sunflowers and heights and Sally and Sandy. The other thing we have to do is compare, right? We're asked to compare. So don't just inform. Talk about which one has a greater center, which one has a lower center, which one's more spread out, which one's less spread out. So make sure you use comparative language as well. So here was my answer for describing or comparing, excuse me, the distribution of these. I said the two distributions differ in many ways and are similar in some. The shapes differ greatly. The sample from Sally seems to be skewed left, a little bit more spread out on the left-hand side. And the sample from Sandy's is skewed to the right, a little bit more spread out on the right-hand side. The center for Sandy's is approximately 58 inches. That was the median, which is less than the center for Sally's at 63 inches. So again, if you go back to those box plots, you get those rough numbers, 58 for Sandy and about 63 for Sally. So Sandy's center is a little bit lower. Then I talked about the spread. I said they both have a minimum value of 41 inches, but Sandy's is way more spread out, going from 41 to 100 feet, while Sandy's sample only ranges from 41 to 70 feet. A little bit less spread there. You could also talk about the IQRs. That, would, that couldn't be a bad idea. Notice that Sandy's IQR, that middle 50%, is a little bit more spread out. Sally's is a little bit more compact, so it's less spread. Those would all be great things to mention as well. And I even threw out there that neither has any outliers. There's no outliers marked here. So really simple. Just make sure you do it in context, bringing up terms from the problem, using proper units, and comparison. All right, finally, it says, for the distribution of heights for the sample of sunflowers from Sandy's, would you expect the mean to be greater than 58, less than 58, or equal to 58? This is the third time I'm asking a question about how the mean compares to the median because it's a really important topic out of Unit 1 that I know is going to be on the AP exam, and it better be on your Unit 1 test. So here we're just focusing on Sandy. So we don't have to worry about Sally at all, Sandy. Now Sandy's dad is a little bit more spread to the right. She has this pretty large value over here, 100. She has a lot of spread over here. So 25% of all of her flowers in the sample are on that side. So that's probably going to pull the mean up a little bit because it's a little bit skewed to the right, more spread here as well, and more spread here than down here. I'm going to go ahead and say that Sandy's mean is probably going to be a little bit higher than the 58. That is what her median is. So my answer is the mean for Sandy's sample will be greater than the median value of 58 because it's skewed to the right nature of the distribution. So hopefully that makes sense. But again, these are great for response questions that could easily be on your test in some shape or form. But if you open up your unit one test and there's no graphical display and no questions about it, then your teacher's not teaching the right things come out of unit one. All right, good luck. And hopefully this is going to prepare you to not not only crush your unit one test in class, but hopefully crush the AP exam in May as well.